Today, we're deploying microscopic killers to the garden to stop pests before they become a problem. Welcome back to Better Terra. I'm Josh, and today we're gonna to be deploying beneficial nematodes in and around the garden. We'll talk about what are beneficial nematodes and why we need them in the garden. If this is a topic that might spark interest in you, go ahead, let us know, and click that like button. Beneficial nematodes are microscopic, non-segmented roundworms that occur naturally throughout the soil. Um, the ones that we're gonna be working with, uh, here are their names. I'm not gonna try to pronounce them, but I'll show them to you here on the screen. Uh, I have three different kinds of uh, beneficial nematodes, and each target a different type of pest. So, uh, got a good coverage. Uh, some of them attack the same, uh, but each one has very specific uh, targets. And here's what they look like under a microscope. There are a lot of non-beneficial nematodes out there, like pinworms, hookworms, whipworms. These are all guys that you don't want to mess with. However, our little friends here are safe for us, our pets, and our veggies. Let's get into what makes them beneficial. These guys are hunters and have pretty specific targets. And like I said before, um, some target different things, uh, but there's a lot of overlap between the two. Uh, here's a little list of some of the targets that they do hit. For us, we know that we have a lot of white grubs in the garden. And in past seasons, we have battled with vine borers and squash beetles. We're really hoping that this year is a lot different. Inside the nematode's gut is the real weapon. Beneficial bacteria that, when released, kill the pest within 24 to 48 hours. The nematodes attack the pest by entering through its mouth, uh, respiratory organs, um, anus, or, or just straight through, uh, straight through its body. After that, they release their beneficial bacteria inside of their target. The nematodes then uh, break down the tissues, use them as a food source, and then move out, multiply, and go on the hunt again. Here is a close-up of these little savages entering the host, and another of them inside the host chowing down. When that pest is no longer a viable food source, they exit the body and move out and find their next victim. It is important to note uh, because I had a concern, if they attack uh, earthworms and like the little red wigglers, none of these species target uh, our earthworm friends uh, that we like to have in the garden. I think at this point we understand why we need them in the garden. They're our garden's army that fights the enemy on its own turf before they become a problem. That helps us later on in the season not having to resort to chemical warfare tactics and using pesticides and, and things that we might not necessarily want on the garden. But sometimes, you know, having an organic garden is very difficult because with a small garden, you don't have the volume of vegetables to sacrifice losing any to pests. Big garden operations that do organic garden, they can afford to lose a percentage to pests. Um, we don't have that, so sometimes it comes to the point where we have to resort uh, to a chemical. I normally uh, escalate my force of using things like neem oil and more natural means of pest deterrent. That's why we plant uh, some cap capture crops and flowers and things like that that the pests would prefer uh, over our vegetables. It's best to apply your nematode force uh, in the cooler mornings or evenings when the soil temperature is around 40 degrees. And we're timing this just right. Our temperatures are just starting to warm up. We had rain last night. Also, we're planning on moving all of the transplants from the greenhouse this weekend to the garden. So our nematodes will already be hard at work 
fighting off the enemy when our plants are going in. Application is really easy. I'm gonna use this hose-in sprayer that I got on Amazon and I'll put a link down below. Um, you start by filling it with just water and I think that I'm gonna add a couple of drops of uh, food dye just so I can see what's in the reservoir a little bit better. Once your reservoir is full, you set your output and it's, um, the packaging says between two and four ounces per gallon. So I'm gonna go at three. Uh, remember, it's just water and food dye at first. You spray until the reservoir is completely empty uh, over your treatment area. And then you use that to calculate how many times you'll have to refill the reservoir to complete the entire treatment area. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that process and figure out uh, how many times we're gonna have to refill to do um, all of the garden and a perimeter around the garden because it doesn't only attack the pests uh, that can damage our garden, um, it can help your yard. So we normally have a problem with ants in the garden and the ants really love the okra. So uh, treating around can help prevent ants, uh, other things in your yard like ticks and fleas and lots and lots of, of benefit, beneficial nematode. So let me uh, get my hose turned on and get the reservoir filled and uh, add some dye and then we're gonna see how many times we have to do this. So I'm gonna fill my pitcher here first. This is more water than we need for sure. Put in a couple dabbles of food coloring. Give that a mix. And then we're gonna fill to the uh, 32 ounce mark. Now we'll go ahead and fill it all the way up. I don't know why we'd stop at 32. So that's gonna help us uh, see what's in there a lot better. And let me get this connected. I'm gonna start with the, uh, the back bed here because it's the biggest. Um, I equal it to be two of the fingers. Um, I'm hoping that I can put one whole container per two and then do three applications. We'll see. Uh, set it at three, uh, three ounces per gallon. So I'm gonna start at the far end and work my way this way. I'm applying until I can see um, standing water on top of the soil and then I'll move on to another section. All right, there's just a last little bit left here in the bottom of the reservoir, but I got a good coverage in the garden bed and then a nice perimeter. So, it's safe, we're gonna be able to do uh, one third, uh, or, or we're gonna be able to divide our nematodes up into three portions. Um, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that next. Now that we know the number of refills that are gonna be required, we can go ahead and start uh, mixing up our, our solution. Um, these are the nematodes here. Um, I purchased these myself from a company called uh, Arbico Organics. And they really seem to be the only online resource um, that seems reliable. Uh, there's a lot of great reviews out there on them. I'll put a link in the description uh, if you wanna go check them out. You can purchase them by how many uh, square feet that you wanna treat. Um, so with all three, um, I don't even remember how many square feet I picked, a smaller square feet because the garden only encompasses about 350 square feet plus a little bit of a perimeter. So since we know we're gonna do three applications, uh, the sprayer holds um, a little bit more than 32 ounces. 
I'm gonna fill my pitcher up here with a little bit over 96 ounces. Actually, uh, let's do some science real quick. These 32 ounces isn't gonna cut the two, isn't gonna make the two fingers. So let's see here. Uh, we're at 30, 34 ounces in the container, sitting on level, call it 35. Let's fill this back up. We're at nothing. Let's bring it down to 32 and see what our what our delta is. Looks like about an extra 10 ounces actually. Seems like a lot. Eight, about 10 ounces. So another 30 ounces would put us at about a gallon. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna leave the food coloring that we have already there. Nothing wrong with it. It's gonna help us, again, see what we're doing. I'm gonna use this to pop us up to a gallon. I'm gonna go just short of a gallon and then use the turbulence of filling the rest up. Okay, so they come in a little package here. They're in a little, uh, I don't know, brown medium. I don't know what it is. Peel back the cover. I'm doing it over my jug here so everything goes in. Give them a shake. Tap out. Actually, I'm gonna stick the whole thing in there and give it a good rinse. We want everything. Sweet, no, there's someone there too. There's uh, 10 million nematodes per package. It's a lot of That's a lot of nematodes. We're adding 30 million pest destroyers to the garden. I really think this method of pre-mixing in another container works better than trying to divvy out a third of this into the small container. Well, we're short some, I guess. I've got some on me. For application, you can use a hose-in sprayer. You can use a regular hand sprayer, you know, one that you pump up that you would apply, you know, weed killer or something like that to. Um, if you have the right configuration on your irrigation system, uh, you could add them to your irrigation system. I'm not sure that they would work uh, in our drip irrigation because of the small ports, but <clears throat> let me get my trash wrangled up here so it doesn't blow away. And let me go ahead and top off with the rest of the water here and just use it kind of agitate a little aeration. There we go. We've got a gallon. I need to find never mind. I was gonna say I need to go find something to do some to do some stirring, but I have a, a tomato steak here. still see some clumps in the bottom. So it gives the water a milky appearance. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill my reservoir and start treating the whole garden in the perimeter at the same rate that I did uh, in my test run. Easy peasy.
I'm seeing that between applications that the uh, nematodes are settling to the bottom. So between applications, a good stir. And also important between applications to sit them in the shade. After your treatment's done, it's a good idea to give the whole treatment area a good soaking with just regular water. That way the nematodes have a chance to reach into the soil. They move vertically um, top to bottom through the soil. So if you can wash them down into the soil where those pests, larvae, eggs and things are, that's the best practice. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of watering today since we're going to be doing planting today. And uh, when you're done, make sure to give your your uh, material a good rinse and pour it right in the garden because any any microscopic friends that are left in there can get right back uh, where you wanted them to go. So like I mentioned, I'll post links to the, to the sprayer and even my uh, measuring pitcher here. I use this for mixing fertilizer, nematodes, all kinds of things. Uh, it's super handy. Today I talked about beneficial nematodes and how they can help us out in the garden and get rid of pests before they start. If you're new to the channel, I would suggest clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss the new things that we have coming out. Thanks for watching and remember, keep on working toward a better Terra, one microscopic killer at a time.